Hey everybody, welcome back to the Fish Tank. Tournament time again here, grand final time in my fishbowl brawl, 2v2. We've got Dark Crow and Set against Aristocrat and Zyke. As always for the grand finals, it's going to be best of five conquest rules. So once a team has won with a master, stroke masters, they can no longer play those masters. And of course they'll have the band powers that we'll talk about soon. As mentioned pre in previous videos, these are the last tournaments in Mini Masters version 1. Coming up very soon, it's Mini Masters 2.0. We're going to have cross platforms, potentially cross platform tournaments. Lot to look forward to. But uh, today, we're going to see who is going to be the winner of my 2v2 Fishbowl Brawl. Let's have a look at the bans. So, Dark Crow and Set banning King Puff. Remember, they can ban, each team can ban a Master and three cards. Their opponents cannot play those. Their opponents, of course, have those same ban, ban powers back towards them. So King Puff and Setsu, the band masters for each team. And we see both teams banning Rimmergal's Breath, very strong card in 2v2, despite its recent nerfs and uh, likely to get nerfed again in the upcoming patch. Now, Dark Crow and Set also burning, Fer banning, sorry, not burning, banning Fergus Flagoon Fighter and Commander Azali. And Aristocrat and Zyke banning Bladestar and Prime Sergeant Radic. Now these teams did play earlier in the tournament. And it was a 2-0 victory for Aristocrat and Zyke. A little bit uh, unexpected you would probably say. Since Darkrow and Set are the reigning champions I think. Uh, so previously having a good victory. But of course what happened in that event could potentially lead to different decks being played today or maybe these bands have been slightly directed by the experiences in that earlier game but that's what happens before let's find out what has happened today grand final time dark crow and set on the blue team aristocrat and zyke on the red team let's get this going here we go with game number one in this 2v2 grand final So we've got King Puff and Apep. We've got Ravager and Setsu. We've got a Ritual deck on the red team. Belek is not a card we see too often, and that's an example of why we don't, because generally it just gets heavily shut down by a spell. Nice shock, Rob. Reboomer goes down. Thelek is slowed, unfortunately. But still pretty tanky. I think Thelix might be getting a buff in the next patch. Can't remember exactly. Maybe an HP buff. Something like that. But uh, he's always one of those cards that does nothing or a lot. Generally nothing. Right. Here's the perk one push with Brutus. Brutus going down pretty quickly in there. Getting absolutely locked in by the defense though. That was the perk one push that came and went, but it's given the XP lead to the red team. Good start from them. Right, Ritual gives them a, uh, the Troubadour with Taunt, of course. Those circles around it mean it's taunting, forcing units to attack it. Curse Bear is going to be great against it. Nice bridge switch, keeping everything locked in place while Fergus goes absolutely ham. And that was uh, a Troubadour not getting too much value. Beam. Beam on the bridge is always dangerous against King Puff, but of course King Puff just used the trick swap, so they knew they weren't going to get switched out of it. So something to pay attention to as the game goes on. Okay, so we've got an Accursed deck on the blue team. Not really a... A meta deck of choice in duos. A cursed, very strong in solos right now, as it didn't used to be. It used to be completely the opposite. Right, both teams have got their perk too. Red team getting there a little earlier. King Puff now has the uh, the royal gifts. That's why we got some rage there. Raged Boomer gets some good value. And the Curse Bear against all these big units could be the MVP here. Avalanche not clearing the bottom, but slowing it enough. Hypnotize comes in from Coates. 
Where's Setsu going? Setsu jumping deep. Nicely done. We've mentioned many times before, Setsu one of those really strong masters in the hands of a good player. Awful in the hands of a lesser player. Again, Chain Lightning just denying all of those archers. That's a lot of face damage coming out from Fergus there. We're still a good way away from a Cursed Ascension. Needs 80 Spectral Essences, currently at 64. We know Perk 3 sets who's going to be strong. Again, we get Troubadour coming out from the Ritual. A big beam shutting down only the uh, the Cokes, but they were obviously worried about that. This time the Troubadour did get through, didn't get through to face, but it did put some pressure on that lane, giving some XP behind it. Right, Perk 3 Setsu needs to be handled with care. It is going to get shut down eventually, but Setsu can come back immediately. One of the things I'm not too fond of Setsu is the way she can come back immediately like that. It doesn't really feel particularly balanced. Ascension has been reached. What is that going to do? The Terror Brood is pushing alone. It is already under 50% HP, so it's not going to get too much done. Darkrow and Set do have a lot of HP left, so they don't really need to worry too much about this. Focus is going to shred the Yahoon. Or oh, the Ghost at the bottom there. That's probably a Perk 3 Ghost from Apep. And they got some value out of that. Sometimes the ghost can be a dead card, but against all these big units, easy value. Right, Nivir played at the top. Again, a big chain. Probably going to get a bear at the bottom. There it is. XP still dead level. Right, Setsu's going to lock that dragon down. Nice bridge switch. Lots of night puffs. This is where King Puff starts being really powerful. Great removal though from the uh, harmful souls. One of the proposed changes in the next patch was a buff to harmful souls. I don't know if it made it, but I was very much against that. It, it seems such a strong removal spell already. I don't know why it would need a, a buff. Right, here comes the charge in. Uh, Fanriel. Remember, Fanriel does the true damage, so you have to use the Apep shield as a wall. Otherwise, it will just get ignored. There's a big beam, but the XP lead is substantial for the blue team at the moment. 40 XP. It's been close, but then suddenly in this last period of the game, they've really got far ahead. Nice bridge where it shuts everything down and I can't see any way that Darkrow and Set don't take this first game of this grand final. This time Nivir spawns offensively, wants to get on that bridge. Keep some pressure going. And there's going to be a good amount of time between now and, and if the red team get their mana frenzy. I don't know how they can possibly hold on. Setsu doing some great value is eventually going to get shut down. Kind of weird why Setsu started moving forward there. I guess some, something in the air must have died. It's, uh, this is going to be... That's a great stun, but it's just going to deny the inevitable here. Right, Darkrow and Set taking the first game in this grand final. Best of five, but they're 1-0 up. We go with game two. Diona and Volko against Morelia and Apep. Another accursed deck. Remember, with the conquest rules, 
Darkrow and Set can't play the Masters from the last game. They can play the same deck, just change up the Masters should they wish to. I feel like that was just a mistake at the bottom there. We saw it got pinged. Those are the kind of interactions at the top level you should know. You should be aware. Not quite enough damage to kill that skeleton outright. Okay, laser turret's going to shut down the bottom pretty efficiently until it gets chain lightning. And then suddenly it's going to get pressurized here. Having to work through that frozen. But of course it will do with ease. Right, where's that spirit going? It's only got one place it can go. And that is on the Diplomancer. And the Diplomancer does survive. Or oh, they try to save it. A little bit late, unfortunately. Don't know... It was so low HP, I don't know if the Glen Sprue would have saved it anyway. Not without it healing a good while first. Alright, blue team slightly behind on XP at the moment. Nothing to be too worried about. That wolf doing a good job just chunking away at the cleaver. Taking that hit on face should only be one hit. Does get shut down. Whirly's going to clear the bottom, but it does take a lot of damage from the bridge burn. Remember, the bridge burn does double damage on a single target, so the Whirly gets absolutely singed. All right, where's the chain lightning? It's not ready. It's coming, but it's not going to be there in time. Deciding not to use it because Fergus was dead anyway. So we do have a Cursed X on both sides. 47 Spectral Essences for the blue team. 55 for the red team. So they're slightly ahead. Working towards that uh, Spectral Essence. A uh, uh, Cursed Ascension, sorry. Completely lost my train of thought. Quick reactions there. Doesn't quite save it, but it uh, does keep everything on the bridge to be burned. Ruffles! Ruffles lives. Gonna grab some mana, but I feel like that mana was probably burned because they looked like they were full mana anyway. Uh, but no, I think I think deck two was from Ruffles, so I think they were okay. Trying to figure out whose deck is whose. Right. Very close to Ascension. Here comes Ascension. So they used the breath before Ascension, which... I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I did miss out on those extra skeletons. And now Darkrow and Set getting their own Ascension. So we'll have certain cards like the Harmful Souls that become stronger than they were before with the uh, Accursed Ascension buff. Right, Fergus lives... No, he doesn't. Often it feels like that last sliver of health that, uh, that the uh, laser turret has just lasts for so long. You're just waiting for it to die, see if your units survive, and it, it just goes on for ages. Right, that trap really doing a great job at damaging that cleaver. Those dark circles on the left by the blue tower, they are from Toll of the Dead, so they will arise at some point. Right, there comes... There you see the skeletons from the Empowered Breath that you get from Perk 3 near there. Perk 3 Morelia, I should say. Kind of worked. But... Right, here comes the Chain Lightning from both teams. Curse Bearer. They want to keep that Curse Bearer alive as long as possible. One mistake you see people use is they just tank with the Curse Bearer. You don't want to do that because you, you want to keep that curse alive for as long as possible. 
And there you can see the curse just lingering on the ground. And, uh... Goodness me, did that dragon die quickly. Right, XP lead, set. That Dark Row. There we see the skeletons on face. Not too much for them to be concerned about, since they do have a lot of HP. More of a thing that's a, a real problem in solos. XP still so close. So they're probably pe playing Fairvalanche instead of Rimmergal's Breath. I imagine Rimmergal's Breath would have been their choice if it was available and been banned. Okay, the, the rage on the dragon there could be important. Let's have a look at the XP, XP lead for the blue team. The dragon's going to just keep everything off of that bridge at the bottom. Does get Glenn's brood as well, so it will stick around. And at this point in the game, it's all about those bridges. Mon of Frenzy about to tick over to a seven dark row of the blue team, and that could give them enough for the lead. It's a nice use of the uh, unholy ground, keeping everything off the bridge at the bottom. Good stun, though. The trap and the chain lightning going to absolutely shut down that turret. It gives them no pressure. Right, Mana Frenzy for both teams. But, of course, the blue team have had that for a while, so they do have a mana bonus overall. Is that going to mean too much? Let's find out. Whirly Scrat's going to do a great job of chonking through all those skellies at the bottom there. Dragon played offensively, as you would expect at this part of the game. You can't afford to give your opponent any chances to grab the bridges. Low HP as well for the uh, blue team, the uh, red team, sorry. They do have the potential to heal. They do have a shield, but that's not really the most terrifying thing. But that dragon just loitering on the bridge, so much HP, that's going to get them so much value. But look at this turret. It's chewing through that dragon. Will it kill it? Not quite. But maybe a Glen's Brew at some point to bring it back. We'll see. Not available yet. Right, Dragon is going to die at some point, I assume, maybe. Still lives. Okay, they're so low. 14 HP, 4 HP. There could be a little skelly that wins this. Fergus, I think, maybe hit face. It might have been the Bouncery Flinger. But uh, Set and Dark Row, the blue team, they take a two game to nil lead in this best of five grand final. Okay, game three, and Aristocrat and Zyke need to take this, or Dark Row and Set are going to be the champions. Can they do it? Let's find out. The light is my guide. What is yours? Okay, so we have Valorian and Morelia against Valorian and Stormbringer, Crystal Elfbringer. Not the most wildly liked strat. But of course no wild cards in these tournaments, so it's not quite as uh, abusive as it is out there on the ladder. Good Bannerman. Maybe a little bit late. I'm not sure they had the uh, mana for it. it. Didn't save everything, but it saved enough. Okay, a bit of a mistake at the bottom there. We're going to see the unit dragged back onto the bridge. Didn't really change much, but it meant that the, uh, the red team had to commit something else to take it. Right, Searing Light is going to be a good few targets for that. Doesn't quite get the removal there, but of course there's a the follow-up near their slumbers to remove it. So again, we've got a Cursed for the blue team. This time with Morelia. It's a Cursed with Nirvir. And since they're playing Novelia, uh, Novelia, Morelia, they get the opportunity to have uh, three quick dragons where you can get... You can spawn your dragon, then quickly get your next perk three dragon to follow that along, and then next slip from that is your next Nirvir from the card. Of course, you can only do that once, because you only get the perk three dragon once, but uh, that's 
something that can put a lot of pressure on having that almost 100% dragon uptime for a little bit. Right, Perk 2 getting to the red team a little bit earlier than the blue team, so Valorian's going to start healing. We've got uh, the marksmanship on the ranged units, of which there will be many. But Perk 2 now for the blue team. Valorian again is going to be healing for the blue team and the empowered spellbook. Look at the dead. Or... Morelia. Nice Bannerman. The shield plus the Bannerman's meat helping to keep the uh, Lele alive, but she doesn't live for too long. This is just where it's so frustrating. The extra range. If you look at the little white icon below the uh, Crystal Archer there at the bottom, that shows that it's got marksmanship plus two range. And they can start trading just insanely. Okay, these skirmishes have led to a good, solid XP lead for the red team here. 208 versus 160, that's substantial. Remember, they're fighting for their lives in this grand final. If they take this game, they will prolong it. And give themselves a chance to fight back. They need to do a reverse sweep if that's going to happen. But uh, before we get any further ahead of ourselves, they've got to just win this game to start with. And they're doing a great job so far. So difficult to push into all of these ranged units. And because of that, we've got a great big XP lead for the red team. Perk 3 now. Glorian's going to be healing twice as much. Searing Light's going to be hitting for twice as much. And Stormringer's going to be attacking twice as much. These are always very frustrating decks to play into. Oh, Fergus. Does Fergus survive this? He might. Fergus does survive. Okay, they got kind of lucky there. It's not really going to change too much, but Fergus does get a lot of value before he dies. They tried to Arcane Bolt the uh, Diplomancer. Fergus spawned, had more health, so it became the target. And it did survive through the stun. Didn't get to the destroy effect. Right. Perk 3 now. What can Nivir do? Problem is here that they're a long way behind on XP. Nivir has been spawned defensively, as you would generally expect. But in this matchup, giving the bridges away is going to be just extra painful. Hey, that healer didn't really know what was going on. Look at this: 260, 270 XP versus 340. That's huge. Even if the blue team can hold the bridges constantly, I, I, the red team are going to get to their mana frenzy first. Okay, Spirited Nivir is going to survive. Just keep that pressure there on the lane. But look at that, 362 XP. We're getting close to mana frenzy for the red team. And if they get there with this sort of a lead, it's going to be immediately game over. Okay, so the next Nivir is going to be available from Perk 3 Nivir. Here it comes, going to be with the Breath of course, empowered from the Ascension. Oh, that ghost at the top's kind of annoying. Does get shut down by the Spear Throwers. Does the Reboomer live to boom another day? No, it doesn't. Right, Mana Frenzy now for the Red Team. You would expect them 99 times out of 100 to close this game out right now. They got to Mana Frenzy first, but crucially they've got a big XP lead. So they're going to enjoy the extra mana that they get because, of course, at this point of the game, XP is turned into mana. So even if you don't have the bridges, just your mana, just basic mana amount has gone up. And then if you get bridges on top of that, which give you XP and therefore mana, it just gets out of control. Right, 20 XP... Away. Can Set and Dark Row hold on? The dragon is down. The next one is not available yet. Fergus doing what he can. 
But Darkrow and Set low on HP as well, so they need to defend their face as well as put pressure on the bridges. And they're struggling to do either of those. Okay, we've got a grand final on our hands here. It's going to be two games to one. Aristocrat and Zyke beginning the potential fight back. Let's do this. Okay, game four. Two games to one, Set and Darkrow leading. Can they close out the events? Or can Aristocrat and Zyke force a decider? Let's find out together. Right. Set and Darkrow playing Mordar and Morelia. We've got a ritual Mordar. We've got Valorian and Apep on the opposing side. Right, Ritual does, of course, there give a troubadour. Let's listen to those bagpipes. Nice chain lightning. Well, I'm not sure about that smite. Not great against a big single target. See a lot of big units. We're going to see the, uh, uh, the laser turret trying to shut it down, but of course we're going to see the chain lightning shutting that down. Okay, tombstone active. We see that green circle around the bottom of uh, the Colossus. That means that uh, that's a Mordar unit, and there is a tombstone in play. Decent blade star. Again, Fergus has that circle around him at the top. He's also a Mordor unit. The spirit on the Colossus is going to keep it alive, which means it's not going to respawn, which I don't really know. I don't know about that Chain Lightning. That was four mana to deny an almost zero HP Colossus. It didn't really seem a good trade. Who knows? Could have been awkward to deal with. Right, let's see how Rendreth does. Needs to be handled with care. You don't want it marking too many units. A lot of HP t being tanked by that cleaver, though. Right. What can Rendreth hit? Doesn't mark buildings. Maybe mark a scrat or two here, but that's not particularly good value. Needs to be, as I mentioned, needs to be handled with care though. You don't want to keep getting too many units marked. Generally, you just let it hit face or a, a building or something. Or oh, a bad res though. At the top there, it looked like that was a scrat res. Uh, not sure what the scrat came out of. Oh, the scrat was because Rendraf res the scrat and then the scrat died and it's uh, revived. So that's one of the problems with playing Rendraft as Mordor, is uh, you can't really control what it's going to uh, mark and ultimately revive. A little bit frustrating. No support for this push, so the turret's going to get a lot of value here. Spirits are going to be nice. They, of course, do hit random things, but if there's only two units and only two spirits, the randomness kind of goes out the window. The only thing you don't know is which one is it going to hit first. Right. Again, the chain lightning shuts down the... Uh Cannon, it does get some good value off, but Tombstone charging up. Okay, they really went ham. I don't think the uh, smite was necessary there. It looked like a bit of a misplay over committal. They just wanted to kill the Colossus before the Tombstone was charged, which they did, but they didn't do it as efficiently as they could have done. Okay, good res there. Bara comes out with a spirit, with haste. Now that Rendreth at the top was from the Ritual. There's another Rendreth as well. 
Whoa, it doesn't quite hit anything yet. This is a decent looking push. Oh, they went for the arcane bolt on the Bara. It got picked up by the shield garden. And that's really just lazy targeting of that. Had they targeted that differently, then that wasn't a, a possibility. So that was a little mistake. Remember, Arcane Bolt will target whatever is the highest HP unit in the area. They must have covered the whole bridge with it. Got unlucky. I don't think the blue team necessarily reacted to it. Or played into it. I think they just got fortunate. But these big tanky units are being a problem. Getting a lot of XP off the back of it. This turret's going to get some good value out here. Going to take those spears, but it will shut down the Colossus. A lot of DPS come out of that turret, but remember, if you remember back in the day, that turret used to be even more crazy. That thing would shred. Looks like we're going to get a mana frenzy situation. Right, see, they, they target that much better. You can't see the way they target it on the replays, unfortunately, but... Uh, they target that much better. Right, Mono Frenzy for the blue team. They should be able to close this out. They've got a good lead. They're going to be able to get some big unit pushes. Get some bridges. Close this game out. And it's looking like Set and Darkrow are going to be the champions here. Aristocrat and Zyke starting the fight back. But it looks like it's going to be a little bit too... A little bit too little. A little bit too late. Bounty Sniper goes down. But the... Onward march of the blue team is just going to be constant. Here comes the chain lightning. And they just can't keep everything away from their face. Look at this. This is Mana Frenzy in action. This is going to be the championship for Sed and Dark Crow. They're going to be crowned the champions. Sed and Dark Crow take this best of five by three games to one. Very well played. Everybody involved there. Right. Okay, let's update our score. Set and Dark Row 3. Aristocrat and Zyke 1. Remember, they did meet earlier in the event when Aristocrat and Zyke did take the victory, but Dark Row and Set getting their own back. And uh, one thing I was thinking, of course, we know that the um, the breath, the Rimmergold's breath was banned. Um, and I think that really was a very strong ban considering that when we think of the game that Aristocrat and Zyke won with the Stormbringer and the Elves, Rimmergold's Breath very strong against that, so that was a great ban to prevent that uh, specifically. Okay, so that's it. We have our champions, Dark Crow and Set. Yeah! Very well played for everyone involved. Remember, these events are open every month. We'll have new ones coming soon for the new patch. Remember, Mini Masters 2.0, the prologue, the early access is dropping on December the 12th. We're going to all go across to that. That's going to be all PC and Steam players and, of course, mobile players in the future. Quarter one, hopefully, for 2024. Something to look forward to. That's, I think, everything that I wanted to mention. Of course, if you're enjoying the content here in the fish tank, make sure you give us a good thumbs up. And uh, if you want to make sure you keep up to date with anything Mini Masters related, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, always good to have you here. We've got over 2,300 subscribers, which is really good. Thanks for everyone that's joined in. Um, let me know in the comments, how are you feeling about Mini Masters? Are you excited for Mini Masters 2.0? I am. Uh, and let's enjoy that together. Anyway, that's enough from me. I'm Bad as a Fish. And as always, I'm awkwardly waving. <laughs>